Hi, I'm Dr. Courtney with the Quantitative Reasoning Center. And as this series of Calc 3 videos wraps up, I hope you will give some consideration to the Air Force Academy's core values. Integrity first, service before self, and excellence in all we do. Now, I'm sure you've had lots of thought about how service before self means service to your country. Putting the needs of supporting and defending the Constitution above your own pleasures and concerns. I hope you'll also consider how you might, while you're thinking about the global possibilities and meaning of service before self, think also about how you might apply this in a day-to-day -day manner. And one of the ways that you can do it is by better preparing yourself through your development of quantitative reasoning skills uh, for later service of your country. But another way that you can do this, service before self, is now that you've succeeded in Calculus 3, or, or at least are within striking distance of succeeding in Calc 3, as you move on and that you will become now the more mature, more experienced student and cadet, I hope you will think about ways that you can help younger, less experienced cadets succeed in the challenging core courses, calculus, physics, and chemistry. Remember how you have struggled with these disciplines and work to overcome, growing in your work habits, growing in your quantitative skills, and be willing to help other cadets succeed as well. Seems like uh, Calculus 3 saves some of the most challenging material for the end of, of the course, and Green's Theorem can be challenging. Uh, when we come to 16.4, number 16, we are to verify, verify Green's Theorem using a computer algebra system to evaluate both the line integral and the double integral, uh, where th this is our integrand, P and Q, and C is the uh, contour or the curve, the space curve, about which, uh, we, with which we are concerned. Well, what does Green's theorem say anyway? So as we come to identify or interpret the problem, let's recall Green's theorem. And Green's theorem says that the integral over a curve of f dot dr is equal to the double integral over the area, and the area is the area bounded by the curve of the gradient of the vector field. And you say, uh, well now wait a minute, this isn't the formula for Green's theorem in the book. Well, it simplifies in the two-dimensional case. In other words, if f is the two-dimensional vector field whose x component is p and whose y component is q, then the integral over the curve is p dx plus q dy. And then the curl becomes partial q partial x minus partial p partial y and these are in parentheses over the area. So the task at hand as we develop our plan, what we really want to do is we need to evaluate the line integral explicitly and get a number. In other words, when we integrate this function, and this is a vector function because it's the x and y components of the vector field, over this curve, the number we get should be the same numerical answer as the surface integral of the curl. So, uh, this sort of makes the plan rather straightforward. The plan is... Um, so let's, di let's divide our plan into two basic parts, the line integral. And to evaluate the line integral, what we need to do is we need to parameterize the path. Another way to think about that is express everything in terms of the parameter t, 
and then actually do the integral over t from whatever point in time is the beginning of the path to whatever point in time brings us all the way back around uh, and closes the curve. All right, so then we express uh, dx and dy in terms of our parameter t. And then we express p and q in terms of t. And this is done by the technique of substitution. Once you have x and t and y, x of t and y of t, right? You just plug those back in here and put p and q in terms of t. And then express the integral. And this is the line integral, remember. And then you can evaluate. All right. And then the second part of our plan is the surface integral, or the integral over the area. And the plan here is to compute, we don't parameterize anything here, we compute partial q, partial x, you compute partial p, partial y, we draw the picture of the region if we haven't yet. We express the limits for our double integral. And then we evaluate. All right, and then uh, we're actually going to leave a lot of this work, especially with the computer algebra system, we're going to leave it as an exercise for the diligent student. So we're going to lay out the plan, and then we're going to leave some of the work up to the viewer. Well, how do we assess this at the end? Well, whatever number we get here should be the same as the number we get here, and those two integrals being equal to each other uh, essentially verifies Green's theorem which, which asserts that when you work to two integrals, the numbers are going to be uh, equal to each other. Well, we're not going to go through all of the details, but let's go ahead and go through some of the evaluation details. All right, so we want to parameterize the path, and if we recall, the path is given by 4x squared plus y squared equals 4. And I'm going to go ahead, I know I said we were going to draw a picture at this point, but uh, this is longer than I usually wait in a problem to draw a picture, so let's go ahead and do this. We can also, we can divide through by 4 and have x squared plus y squared over 4 is equal to 1. So as we think about this for a moment, this is an ellipse centered at the origin with an extent of 1 in the x direction because when y is equal to 0, x is equal to plus 1 and minus 1. And then when x is equal to 0, we're on the y-axis and y is equal to plus 2 and minus 2. So this is an ellipse uh, with an extent of 2 uh, plus and minus 2 in the y direction and an extent of 1 in the x direction. Well, how do we parameterize this? Well, x of t is equal to cosine of t and y of t is equal to 2 sine of t and we'll go all the way around the curve for t goes from 0 to 2 pi. And one thing I'll leave as an exercise for the students is you need to consider whether or not this parameterization goes around the curve counterclockwise or clockwise. Because if you reverse the direction over which you do a line integral, you get a minus sign here. And the theorem only works when you go around the curve in a specific direction. So I'll leave, uh, leave it up to the viewer to double check which way you need to go in the book 
and either insert the minus sign or adjust your parameterization so you're going around in the direction that works. All right, so now when we have this parameterization, let's go ahead and express dx and dy in terms of t. Well, if x is equal to cos t, dx dt is equal to minus sine t, and uh, the way that we then get dx in terms of dt is we multiply dt by both sides, so dx equals minus sine t dt. And by an analogous few steps, dy is equal to 2 cos t dt. So now when we address this line integral, we substitute in for p everything in terms of t, we substitute in dx in terms of dt, and we do the same for q and dy, and the limits on t are from 0 to 2 pi, and then we simply evaluate the line integral. Now, for the surface integral, we compute our partial derivatives of p and q, and we substitute them in, and dA is just dx times dy, if you do uh, x as the inside integral. And then we can think about how we define the limits of the region. Well, the upper bound of the region would be given by x is equal to plus the square root of 1 minus y squared over 4. And then, uh, well, this is the upper bound. The lower bound would be x equals minus the square root of 1 minus y squared over 4. And then y would go from negative 2 to 2. All right. So this is a very nice problem because what it's doing is it's bringing together tools that we've been working hard to learn all semester. And all the tools come together and we're able to show that Green's theorem is true in this special case.